Okay, the good doctor, you take us away. The I know that turned. y'all wonder, what are they always laughing about <laughs> when they come on this thing? If you only knew. If you only knew. You'll never know. You'll never know. Well, yesterday was our introduction to the Advent season. Yes, it and was. It, the musical, The Son of God, uh, yesterday, tremendous In between the services, I tweeted out, you know, I said, I'm in between services, and wow, what a great worship experience. I appreciated that. I think that's what I said. Uh, But it really was. And I'm just finding out that our esteemed colleague and minister of music, our monster of music here, has uh, wrote one of the songs I was talking about. It was kind of a Bob Dylan type. Did you intend it to be that way? We Are But Dust? Did Bob we are Dylan? Just dust. I don't. It was. It felt more like a chant to me. I, I don't. I'm trying to remember when I first. It felt well. It, it felt a little bit more Bon Iver to me when I first wrote it. But he's kind of. You could. You could put him in the. Yeah. You don't know who Bon Iver is. His real name I, I is was, Justin Vernon. He's an indie artist. But but I, I you could you could make an argument that Bon Iver is like sort of a new new wave Bob Dylan. Of course, sort of he does. He did everything by himself at first, and but uh, but yeah, just like that earthy chant like sort now, of thing. Now yeah. this is fascinating to me. Okay. And I'm sure to you. When you write a song, where does that stuff where do you get that? Where does where do you get the idea? Because the song to me the first time I heard it yeah. yesterday morning, the first service, man, I'm thinking through this thing. This this is right. It's exactly it's man is fallen. Man is nothing but dust. Um where where do you where do you get that? Where does the music come from? And then where do where do the lyrics come from? Well, Which comes first? Well, that that's always different. That's always different. The harder thing for me is always the lyrics. You know, usually I if I get a melodic idea that I like, mm-hmm. that's what I stick with. I'm like, well, I can write I can write a poem that'll go in here. That's the easy part. It's just, it gets it gets real systematic. So the lyrics are not hard at all. It's it's never been hard for me, but I but every songwriter is different. Every songwriter is different. And it, I tell you, it's really easy to write lyrics that you're not pleased with, right? You always have to go back and write. And well, I was rewrite. hoping you would say that's the hard part for you because that's the easy. That would be the easy part for me. And I was hoping we'd do this Rodgers and Hammerstein type. Well, we already had the Blues Brothers you know? thing. We just need to, we not, finally need to make that happen, you know, <laughs> Mac and Kirkwood. Yeah, songwriting is so weird, though. You know, you can listen to a bunch of podcasts on songwriting, and you can read all these articles about it, and nobody will ever tell you the same thing because it's it's totally different. Now, but that was such an unusual song. Yeah. So where did that come from? Well, I wrote that in, like, um, I think it was either 2010 or 2011, and I was serving overseas, and I was studying theology some at the same time, and I, I was first... I was first introduced to this concept of the total depravity of man. Mm-hmm. Just that like we we're not we are not uh sinful because we've sinned. Mm-hmm. We're sinful because we're sinners. Mm-hmm. Like that's what mm-hmm. we're born into. That's mm-hmm. the curse of Adam. Mm-hmm. And um and recognizing that apart from the grace of God, we're nothing but dust. We don't have any we don't have any merit of ourselves. He's given us this image He's bestowed his image upon us, which gives us that basic human dignity. And it, as you said yesterday, it gives it's his great grace and mercy mm-hmm. upon us. But like all we did to the image of God, we didn't add anything to it. All we did was mar it yes. when yeah. we sinned. And so that was, and that was a time where I was struggling with with a lot of sin in my in my life. And I was just uh, it was it was written from a place of. Um, a little bit of anger and a little bit of grief. The original version is is still online somewhere. I rewrote this one a little bit to give it a little bit more hope. And, and let me tell you why that fascinates okay. people who are non-musical like me. Sure. Is because there are times I wish I could express myself in music. Uh, well, I do. And you, I, I, can, I mean, I can't play the piano and I can't, you know, Well, you write sing music very or well, like though. That. But there, there are times, I'm sure that you're sitting out there and you're thinking the same thing. You know, there's sometimes either in sorrow, in depression, in hurt, in pain, or 
and joy and worship. Yes. And I mean, you know, we get to the end of the thing, and there's Joanna, and Joanna hits that note, yeah. and she comes, and I think I'm coming out my skin on this. <laughs> At the end of the, if you didn't, if you were not here yesterday, you missed a tremendous day of worship. Yes. Uh, not just music, but just worship. And I don't know how that is captured on video, but you want to go back and listen to the song uh, that Kirkwood wrote. And then, of course, listen to the end, which is all the hope in the world. Yeah, we'll try to chop it up and maybe release a couple of clips from it. We'll, we'll, we, we, have, we have the whole thing in HD, right, that we could redo. Here's, here's what I want to say, though, in, re in response to you, like, wanting to worship. I feel like that's part of the, um, the life calling that the Lord has put upon me, is to help people realize that even if you don't have some kind of particularly special music ability, that, that desire that you have is still a good thing. And I think it's, not, it's a desire that we're supposed to walk in. You know, I've said this, you've heard me say this to the elders, you've heard, this say me, you've heard me say this to the men of the church, that like not having a certain level of musical talent does not excuse you from God's command to sing. Mm -hmm. And God's command to sing isn't one of these, I mean, it's really not a burdensome commandment. Like what you feel is common to every man and woman. Mm -hmm. Like you, there's, mm -hmm. this, there's this level of joy or a level of desperation that comes where words won't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. And we just explode. Into, this is one of the reasons, and what, you, know, you can disagree with, me, disagree with me if you want to. It's why the whole format of the Broadway musical still works. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking... We're speaking, but there's an emotional level that we can't rise to unless we sing about this. Yeah. This is why yeah. opera came to be hundreds of years ago. Obviously I think that's you're right. No, I wouldn't disagree at all. I think you're exactly right. And um, I think that's why God gave man the ability to sing. Now, we talk about birds singing, but they really, they're really not singing, you know. Um, but no other animal has this ability but man. And the interesting thing is this. No other religion in the world has music like Christians. That is very true. That's very true. Um, and so we express to God our praise. And I think for a lot of us who are not musically inclined, although we may can sing a little bit, um, just to be able to write something like that and to be able to express what you're feeling in song. Well, it was, it was powerful. I had to listen to it first in the first service to kind of, boy, this is so new, i got to think about it. And then I came back in the second service, and I really enjoyed And that's when I started thinking, this is a little Bob Dylan here. So, yeah, you're talking about dust in particular, not yes. the whole. Yes, yeah, yeah not the well, whole, just the song. I think it's interesting that that one jumped out to you because we, and, you know, jo Joanna, our producer who's sitting over there, can can attest to this, like, with the with the rest of the, with, with like the choir and with the band, I told him over and over, I was like, guys, this is, I mean, obviously I'm praying for the whole show, but I'm praying for this one because mm -hmm. it's weird. It's out there. It's dark. Uh, in a manner of speaking, it's just not Christmas music. Right. But we're doing it as a part of this thing that is Christmas in the hopes that it will help people understand the depths of desperation yeah. that Christ rescued us from. Yeah. And I think that, and you know, Joseph, our tech director, did a great job with, with video, and um, Lucius did a great job. He's our associate. He did a great job with audio at, like, seeing the catharsis when, mm -hmm. when, when Christ does come. Which... Well, I thought it was great. I, I, I love the way it fit in. I think it was perfect. There is a part of the Christmas story that's very dark. Yes, yes. In fact, there are a couple of parts of it that's very Number one is just the darkness of man. The darkness of sin. The other, and you see that so clearly in Herod. Oh, yes. Uh, who wants to slaughter children, you know. Yeah, who wants the, to slaughter babies. How dark can you get than that? Yeah, well, even in, even before that, just the coming of of Christ in 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 the first place, we, we've been singing that, that expanded version of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, right. where the last line of the third verse is, Born within a cattle stall. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that language in part because we're like, oh yeah, it was a stable and a manger, et cetera, et cetera. And we, you know, we're not, we're, most of us are not farmers. You know, we didn't come up in that world where we know how dirty a stable is, even a clean one. 
-hmm. still smells, it does. you know? Yeah. And hay is not particularly clean. Usually yeah. it's got animal refuse in it. Um, and that is where the Lord of the universe was laid. Yeah. That's, that's pretty dark. Andrew Peterson has, I think, is it Andrew Peterson that has the, it was not a silent night? Is that on the Behold the Lamb? Um, wonderful song. It's sort of a, it's sort of an answer to this whole idea of like little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes and everybody's faces are glowing and everything's perfectly clean, which none of that, none of that was true. You know, that's the humility of Christ, Philippians 2, like he emptied himself, making himself nothing. Like when he came, um, it, it was, it was a birth mm -hmm. and although birth is beautiful, it's also, it's also bloody. Mm -hmm. And then he came into the uncleanness of that stable. And then, like, then, then jump into what you said. Then just his coming, the jealousy of a king who was not a rightful king, mm -hmm. then, then putting to death all of these young sons of Israel. Man, it's, wow, you're right. That's yeah. rough. Yeah, Rachel weeping for her children. Oh. So yesterday, was, it was good. Uh, the interesting thing are the people that came out after each oh, of yeah, the I services. Oh, yeah, I to ask you about that. Great response. In fact, I had a, uh, a senior adult couple come out, and he walked up to me, and he said, I want to join the church. So he wow. and his wife were there, and I, I got Patrick. Patrick took him over and got the information good, from good. him. And, you know, just other folks that were coming out, uh, just expressing what it had meant to them. I told this, and I, I'll say this to you, and this is, you, you can tell me. And tons of visitors. Good Yeah, night. praise the Lord. Well, and that was, so you were the one that said, we got to get the children's choir involved again. Yep. And we yep. did, and I think you can see the fruit from that and all the oh, people that came. Oh, my stars. Did she do a, an incredible yes. job? I had three grandchildren up there. And they all stood so well and knew their words and sang. They did and great. Did such a great job. Molly mm -hmm. with the orchestra. Incredible, yeah. Just did an incredible job. It's just one of those things I said. Um, and I love to hear the orchestra play. Yes, they, they, they do great. Uh, we, have a, we have a wealth of talent here, and our producers are telling us now that we had 1,100 people yesterday, well, which we that's had pretty more cool. than that, I bet. But, well, anyway. you are a Baptist. Well, I'm a preacher, so, but uh, it looked like throngs yeah it was, throngs. It was easily easily you know, 2000 we get up and talk, the throngs that are here this morning <laughs> see now we have a live stream so you can't make that stuff up anymore that's 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 really funny well yeah they they all did a great job i loved i loved being able to see um what was what the we one thing you wanted everybody to walk out of there with i want people i i want people to be able to well this is the way I've sort of phrased it in my prayer life. Lord, you have, you have blessed me in, I feel like, a unique way with just the emotion that overtakes me at Christmas. As I think about, and you said this really well yesterday, when does the Christ Christmas story begin? Mm -hmm. Well, it begins in Genesis 3 with mm -hmm. the Proto-Evangelium, that is the first preaching of the gospel, that there will be another that will come. And I want people to see that because when you see that, you know, and you, and, and you recognize that the Christmas story took 2,000 years to unfold, mm -hmm. more, than, more than that, and how it's still unfolding as the kingdom of God expands. That's right. You That's know, a good thought. That makes Lord of the Rings look like, you know, an after-school special. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah. wow, look at these epic stories that we're telling, and Star Wars has nine parts, and I'm like, man, this, you know, God told it first, yeah. and he told yeah. it best. I want people. I want people to have that same respect and awe of the majesty of Christmas. And here, but here's the other side of the coin to that. And you can, you can maybe encourage me in this because I had this, this very very kind uh, woman who was visiting yesterday from a different church, and I think she was probably in her mid 70s. And she just she had tears in her eyes, and she just said, "Listen, I, I want you to know that this music today has." has made me see Christmas in a completely different light. Like, mm. I have never experienced the emotion of Christmas mm. like this. And I said, that is, that's, that's wonderful. That's beautiful. Like, I'm going to take that one, you know, I'm going to take that one to the bank. I'm going to share that with the team. And, but there was a catch in my spirit because I was 
because I was thinking about how we're discipling like those young people standing mm-hmm. in the children's choir. And I said, I, I basically was just thinking to myself, Lord, as far as it depends on me and this creative team, let's not have anybody at this church um, ever misunderstand what's happening at Christmas. Mm-hmm. Let's have the lights go on now, mm-hmm. not before age 75. Yeah. Well, thank the Lord uh, that it does come on for 75-year-olds and 85-year-olds. You're right. And well, in any time. For five-year-olds and all. So yesterday was great. Thank you for it. Thank, I thank all the orchestra and the yeah. choir and all the technical guys that and gals that uh, made all of that happen. Well, but as we were, I want you to comment on this, too, because as we were working really hard, um, the, on the on the music stuff, you actually were were out of town this week, and you were doing something really unique. Yeah. You went up to yeah. New York. Talk about that a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, I was in New York uh, for the almost not quite the week, but I, I I've been doing this for twenty years. Yeah, and I go up and now I had the did opportunity. That start? Well, how it that? started when I was at First Dallas, and Dr. Graham was a member of the church, and twenty years ago, twenty one years ago, they did a night at the UN with Billy Graham. Oh, I didn't and know that he was a member was, first Dallas. Yeah, okay. and I went up and was there for that and sat that night. Sitting right here by me was the, I guess it's okay to say now, yeah. the ambassador from North Korea. Oh, wow. Libya, Egypt. And so I was at the table with these wow. guys, and it kind of started out of that with uh, Ken Welburn. And so I go back now every year, hey, and I'll, I'll, inv- I'll visit a number of ambassadors. For, uh, I did that on Wednesday, and then uh, Friday morning at one o- at one o'clock at nine o'clock, um, about seven ambassadors came into um, an office, and I sat down with them, and they they stretched all the way from the South Pacific yeah. Islands to the other side of Fiji, all the way around to the heart of Africa. Now, is this just these a, ambassadors? A, these ambassadors, is this just elective? They say they, they know there's a minister they, here. And... Well, no, we uh, we've built. I, I've done it for 20 years. Yeah. So I've built a relationship with a lot of them, with a number of them, and the, the guy that's up there who carries out the ministry there, uh, he ministers all week long, every week, you know, 365 days a year. So he's kind of a pastor to him. He knows them. He greets yeah. them when they come. But I've gotten to know a lot of the people in their offices because their secretaries don't change. The ambassadors will change. Oh, okay. You know, about every two years. Most countries will do it every two, three years. Some countries will leave them here for a while. But their office personnel stays. And there are some years I go up and I am able to share with the office personnel, That's which cool. is really neat. To go in with all of these secretaries of ambassadors, and sometimes they're deputy secretaries and things like that, and share with them. I keep smiling just because I think about you you sharing with these ambassador ambassadors of earthly kingdoms, and you're going as an ambassador of the heavenly kingdom. I think well, I had neat. one ambassador, and here's a fascinating thing, who waited until all the other ambassadors left, and he stayed behind this year, hmm. uh, or uh, Friday. He stayed behind, and... He came up to me and was talking to me because I'd made the comment. He'd spoken up twice. I said, you know what, boy, you really, Mr. Ambassador, you have what we call a pastor's heart. Mm. So he stayed afterwards. And the fact of the matter is, I think God's calling that ambassador into the ministry. (laughs) That's amazing. And so we talked about seminary. We talked about studying. We talked about theology. talked about how he could get enrolled in seminary. I said, I can help you do that. I said, you need to pray about this. Um, I said, what a great thing to go from being an ambassador from a, an earthly kingdom to being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. But that's what Paul says every Christian is. Yes. For we are ambassadors of Christ. I love that, man. Thanks for yeah, sharing some. Well, sure. you, well, you guys heard it here first, um, the announcement that the Reverend Dr. Donald Mac Brunson is, in fact, pursuing the, uh, the presidential nomination in the year 2020. <laughs> Nothing could be further. <laughs> no, no, it could not. Yeah, don't take that one. I out wouldn't of take it if they walked in here and handed it to me. <laughs> well, this has been fun. I, this has been a little bit different than normal, yeah. but it's fun talking through these. I'm glad I got to ask you questions today. I know. Well, the reason we were laughing when we went live is because Pastor sat down and he said, Kirkwood, I just have one question for you. Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> just what do you think you're doing? <laughs> 
We have a great time at church. I don't know what you do at your church. We have a good time here. Um, so, but we before we close, we got to talk about this coming Sunday because as for all reports are are pointing to you once again getting in the pulpit. I, I will be yeah. back in the pulpit. Am I spiritually investing in others? That to me, that's the measure question. Is a huge, huge question for all yes. of us. Am I spiritually investing in others? That's what I tried to do this past week in the life of ambassadors to the UN that nobody ever goes and talks to them about spiritual things, but the Lord's mm -hmm. given me an unusual opportunity to do it, and so I tried to. But not just them. What about the guy next door? What about your brother-in-law? Yeah. What about your sister-in-law? What about you well, know, Well, and it's whoever? not necessarily people that are already believers. That's right. It can be, it can be yeah. anyone. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to this message. I am too, because I'm going to look at a couple that every, you see them six times in the New Testament. And every time you see them, practically, they're either investing in the life of someone or they are going to a place where they're going to invest in the life of someone. And that's all they do. Priscilla and Aquila. You, okay. There you Just go. double checking. It wasn't there you like go. You were going to come way out of left field. <laughs> so no, it was Bernice and Bubba. <laughs> that's that's right. Let me. Wow. That's in that, the last chapter of Acts. Acts, you come Acts chapter 31. Bernice and Bubba. No. It's in no, third, it's Aquila and Priscilla. Third Timothy. Second yeah. opinions. Yeah. All those made up Bible. That man, that, that sermon from Ezra. What, what did you forget? What did we say? Nehemiah? Ezra. <laughs> the book of Ezra. <laughs> you guys are going to have to go back three episodes for that. Well, hey, if uh, it, we hope you've enjoyed this. We're obviously enjoying ourselves. We uh, are. Make sure to check out our, our YouTube channel. That's, where, that's the primary place where all of our resources are going. And if you subscribe, you'll be the first one to know when new stuff comes out. There you go. And if you want to take it even one step further, you can click the bell on YouTube, which uh, then, then it, you'll get notified immediately. And then you, can, then you can watch to your heart's content. Listen, we're doing these resources because we want to reach you where you are so that you can help our busy community know Christ and live for him. That's all for us today. We'll see you Sunday. Peace and love. Power to the people. <laughs> Oh my gosh, let's go back to the 60s.